A heat wave grips the county. Will it last until the weekend? We have your first microclimate forecast. Well, the heat is on in the East County. We talk with residents trying to cool off and hear from sdg &E for ways to save on your energy bill. New water restrictions in place for San Diego. What are the new rules and what do they mean for you? It's the first weekend of the fair. I'll tell you all about the food, the ride, and the face painting. And kittens may be cute, but sometimes you need to dial down the heat on kitty season. The volunteers helping homeless cats. CBS 8 News live at 6 starts right now. Well, get ready for a warm weekend as a heat wave continues. You might be tempted to turn on the AC or do whatever you can just to keep cool. Good evening, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Marcella has the night off. I'm Carlo Chiquetta. We'll have more on the high cost of cooling in just a minute. But first, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis. What's happening out there right now, Carlene? Well, we are feeling the heat. Temperatures are starting to back away from that because our daytime do do? highs have already passed. So taking a look at how we shaped up for today, we hit a high that was at 93 degrees for Ramona. That was the same for Alpine. Also talking about 91 degrees for Escondido. The one spot that was actually seasonal and not about 10 to 15 degrees above that was right along the coast. So the coast still had the influence of the marine layer. And that will be the case as we go into tomorrow's forecast as well. 100 degrees in Campo today broke the record by two two degrees set on this day back in 2019. So we are still eyeing those records, especially in the desert when it comes to our daytime highs for tomorrow. Still holding on to that excessive heat warning. 113 looks to be the high for the desert tomorrow. Still locked into those 90s to start off the weekend. That will be the case for the inland valleys as well as the mountains and still with the marine layer closer towards the coast. You have the 70s, so fairly mild and actually near seasonal temperatures. But we do have a cool down. It's a brief one coming before we get some more heat next week. All those details are coming up. Carlo. Thanks, Carlene. And when the heat turns up, the AC goes on if you have it in your home. But as the thermostat drops, your electric bill climbs higher and higher. We're working for you to find out ways to save. Our Heather Hope got some cool tips from SDG&E. Well, the heat is certainly on inland from Poway to Ramona and Julian. Residents are looking for ways to keep cool and to save on their energy bills. Yes, it feels like it's 100 degrees. Maybe it's just because of the sudden change, but it is really warm. Feeling the effects of the heat wave, Alyssa McMorrin, who works outdoors at the Rolling Hills Horse Ranch in Poway, says while other Home Depot customers may be buying fans, she needs a change of clothes. So my hope is that they sell tank tops in there because there's no way I'm going to make it in this shirt. For those cranking up the AC and shutting it off when they leave, sdg and E's Sarah Prince says leaving it on will save customers money. Don't turn your thermostat off and on. Keep it at a complete steady temperature because if you're turning it off and then turning it back on, it makes your, your system work just that much harder and it pulls way more energy than it needs to. sdg and E customers can see a spike in their power bills when they're using more energy during a heat wave. Prince says some cost saving tips include close the drapes and blinds, make sure you change your AC filter regularly and avoid using large appliances during high peak hours from 4 to 9 p.m. Try to cool your, your, your house, your apartment, your room down as much as you can before 4 p.m. Um, and that way you can kind of take advantage of the lower price during that time. Also to save money, sdg and &E suggests taking its home energy survey. The checkup gives you a breakdown on how you and your home use energy. I took the survey and got a breakdown of my appliance, electronics, and water heating usage. For each section, it provided tips such as seal air leaks, install window shades, use fans instead of the AC. When I clicked on the fan section, it said I could save up to $10 a year. You know, just raising your AC temperature just a degree higher than, than that's another option as well to stay cool and comfortable and, and manage your energy use. Wanting to come indoors, but I'm pretty hot, man. I'm real hot. Tree trimmer Jacob Pena and Julian, where it hit 91 degrees, felt sick in the hot weather and was ready for a cool down. You got a lot of sweat on you, bro. Yeah, God. <laughs> that like I'm a, help? Yeah, I hope so, because I need, I'm, I feel like I might throw up right now. You want a water? No, I want this. <laughs> Heather Hope, CBS 8. Just hours ago, a lockdown was lifted at Taft Middle School in Sarah Mesa following a shooting threat. San Diego police say someone Apple airdropped a threat text to a number of students at school just before two this afternoon. A search of the campus didn't turn up anything. The lockdown was lifted after about an hour. 
Tonight, the murder case against Larry Miliette is on hold pending a mental evaluation of the defendant to determine if he's competent to stand trial. Yeah, Miliette is charged with the murder of his wife, Maya, whose body still has not been found. CBS 8's David Gofferson spoke to an attorney this afternoon who says the delay in this case may not benefit the defense. All right, you are declaring a doubt as to his competency pursuant to Penal Code Section 1368. The defense move came just two and a half weeks before evidence in the case was supposed to be presented in open court in a preliminary hearing against Larry Miliete. He's accused of murdering his wife, Maya Miliete, in January of last year. Criminal proceedings will be suspended. On Thursday, the judge suspended criminal proceedings against the 40-year-old father of three pending a mental evaluation. I spoke to Miliete's attorney today, who told me she wants experts to evaluate her client, not to delay the case, but to make sure he's mentally fit to stand trial. With Miliete behind bars held without bail, his attorney says not being able to see his children has taken a mental toll on her client. Usually defense attorneys do not want their client to be declared incompetent if they're competent. Attorney Gretchen von Helms is not associated with the case, but she knows how the system works. She says two county-paid psychiatrists will now examine Miliete and then issue a written report to the court. They have pools, because they're medical doctors, to see if he's malingering, if he's faking it, which is called malingering, and they're able to tell if someone genuinely understands what the charges are and is able to assist in his lawyer's defense of him for the case. I also spoke to Maya's sister and brother-in-law, who told me they are frustrated by what they see as a delay tactic. But they said they're not surprised because they were warned by the DA's office that this might happen. Von Helm says the evaluation process can take a few months or much longer if Miliete requires treatment in a state mental hospital. They do medication, electroshock therapy, talk therapy, other types of therapy and medication to, quote, restore the person to competency if possible. Now, the next hearing in this case is now set for August 29th in San Diego downtown court before a judge who deals specifically with mental competency issues. David, in the meantime, there's still the mystery of what happened to Maya. Are volunteers still conducting weekend searches for her? Uh, yes, they are, but they are no longer publicly announcing the location of those searches on Facebook or social media. Instead, a much smaller search team, which has been professionally trained now, continues that search effort. All right, David Gofferson reporting live for us. Thanks, David. And we are learning more about another military aircraft crash. This one about 35 miles north of Yuma, Arizona. All four of the crew in the crash are expected to be okay. According to NAS North Island, where the helicopter was based, this happened about five yesterday evening near the community of Palo Verde. Right now, we don't know what caused that crash, but yesterday's crash came just one day after an Osprey from Kent Pendleton crashed near Glamis and killed five Marines. Former Vice President Mike Pence's lawyer is expected to testify next week before the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol. As Natalie Brand reports, as of last night, the committee has already started laying out its most comprehensive picture of what happened. The historic primetime hearing of the Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol is just the first. The world is watching what we do here. As the panel lays out its case that former President Donald Trump oversaw and coordinated a multi-part plan to overturn the 2020 election. We believe Donald Trump is responsible. He lit the flame. He, he summoned the mob. But this could still be a problem. Democracy is not safe unless we agree to follow a certain set of standards. In never seen before testimony, former Attorney General Bill Barr said he made clear he didn't agree with the idea the election was stolen. I told the president it was I respect Attorney General Barr, um, so I accepted what he said, was saying. 
Former President Trump, responding on his social media platform, blasted his daughter, saying she was not involved in studying election results. House GOP leaders have criticized the committee as political and illegitimate. In a new revelation by the panel Thursday, Vice Chair Liz Cheney said that Pennsylvania Republican Scott Perry and multiple other GOP members sought presidential pardons for their roles in attempting to overturn the election. Congressman Perry on Twitter called it an absolute shameless and soulless lie. We have the documentation. The committee also revealed Thursday that the former president did not call federal law enforcement to protect the Capitol that day. Then Vice President Mike Pence did as officers engaged in hand to hand combat. And I saw friends with blood all over their faces. I was slipping in people's blood. CBS News has confirmed a former DOJ official is expected to testify next week. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Okay, so other than the remarks the former president made about his daughter online today, he also called the hearings a, quote, political witch hunt. Just hours ago, we spoke to Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs. Not only was she at the hearing last night, she was inside the Capitol building the day it was stormed. She shared with us how difficult it was to relive those moments yesterday. It brought back a lot of memories, uh, a lot of the sensory feelings of what happened. You know, for me, one of the things that really stuck with me from that day was the sound inside the chamber of all of the gas masks. It was this buzzing sound. And so hearing that in the video uh, was really hard and it really everything came rushing back. Congresswoman Jacobs says she believes it's important for Americans to hear the facts and hopes the hearings will help the nation heal and move forward. In Los Angeles today, U.S. and other world leaders closed out the Summit of the Americas. The Biden administration unveiled a plan that it says will help nations across the Americas address migration issues. 20 countries signed onto the Los Angeles Declaration on Migration and Protection at the summit. The declaration states four main goals, stability and assistance, promoting legal pathways of migration, having humane border management and coordinating emergency response efforts.